everyone. My name is Emily. Again, I am the president of SPCS, and I am so honored to welcome and introduce Dave Abram, a distinguished comms alum who will present today's SPCS panel, leveraging your comms knowledge and skills in sales professions. Dave graduated from Ohio University with a bachelor's in organizational communication. He has worked in several industries such as consumer packaged goods, sporting goods, and building materials. He has worked in sales, marketing, and new business development within those industries. He served Ohio University for eight years as the president of the Massachusetts chapter of alumni. Currently, he serves as the chair of the Comms Alumni Advisory Council. In this role, he created the Dave David DeScootner Excellence in Undergraduate Education Fund that provides scholarships every year to comms undergraduate students. He also serves as the on the university-wide Ohio University Foundation Board. So please everyone give Dave a very warm welcome. Thanks Emily, I really appreciate the introduction. Um, very kind of you. And so I'll ask everybody to, uh, as we enter into this discussion, uh, keep an open mind and uh, I'll be sharing a slide deck, but the one thing I really wanted to share in my introduction to this discussion was first, it's always a pleasure to, to speak with students. So later I'll be sharing my contact info and please feel free to reach out to me. Secondly, I'd ask you to keep an open mind while you may have your ideal career path in mind. Um, the, the, the profession of sales is something that carries uh, occasionally for people a pejorative or a negative connotation. And I was, a, I was a reluctant person to get into the sales profession, but I've spent the last 25 plus years in, in that uh, skill, and it's been really gratifying for me. So what I'd like to do uh, here, I'll share my screen. I'm gonna take you on a little, uh, on a little trip uh, so that you can learn a little more about uh, my background. So, um, the, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll first do some, some focused storytelling, uh, as we call it in uh, the true value business that I work uh, currently. Uh, I'll walk through just very quickly a biography of myself. Then I'm going to talk specifically about the hard and soft skills that I learn in interpersonal or organizational communications that really helped me be successful in my career, not only in sales, but just in general, uh, have allowed me to be successful. So, um, and then obviously there'll be time for Q and A later. Um, and so what I'd like to do is if I can get my deck in the right format here. There we go. So what I would like to do quickly is just give you a little insight into what my um, path looked like as I was going through college. So as I was very much in your um, shoes entering into college, that's me. So that's Dave Abram at 18. And uh, it, when I was at this point in time in my career, I very much thought that all I wanted to do was be a golf professional. I wanted to work at a local country club. I wanted to give lessons. I really enjoyed the industry and I found it really gratifying. I worked at my local golf course and uh, I knew that that was what I was going to do for my entire life. You could not convince me to do anything else other than be a golf professional. And so when I was going into college, what I really felt was important and what my parents really influenced me to do was to make sure that I entered uh, college pursuing skills or traits that um, for me gave me kind of task oriented skill sets. So I entered considering pursuing business. And so I felt like, you know, if I had a degree in accounting or management, that that would lend itself to the types of skills that I could be successful in a career in running a small business. Um, the, uh, what I found, though, is through my time in pursuing that degree, I was never really that engaged in the coursework. So as I, as I was going through college, I felt like I became very good at memorizing 
knowledge, but I was never really feeling a connection to the coursework. I never really felt like I was able to internalize what I was learning and, and didn't feel like it was making a difference in my life. So I took a variety of different um, uh, courses throughout the first couple of years of college. And there were certain classes that I took that started to speak to me. And so initially when I took courses like public speaking, which as we all know, that's the number one fear of people before death, um, which is hilarious. Uh, the, the last thing people would want to do is find themselves talking to a group of individuals, cold without any introduction. And so I felt as though I was going to have the same experience with that, but I really warmed to the experience when I was, uh, when I was in high school, I was, I was always an organizer and I was initiating connection between individuals, but I was very much an introvert. And so I could never really see myself as doing something like sales or really being aggressive and pursuing human personal connections with, with folks. And so as I continued to go through my coursework, like at the time it was called INCO 205, which was group discussion or INCO 206, which was interpersonal communication, that really kind of changed my, my trajectory uh, as I thought about, you know, what do I want to end up majoring in? And so I had a great uh, advisor named Elizabeth Graham, who was a communication studies major, and she really transformed my educational experience. So she turned me on to uh, the School of Interpersonal Communication. And uh, as I was not feeling connected in the College of Business, I pursued a minor track, but this is actually, I, I've kept the booklet um, and so as I, as I was going through doing the preparation for this presentation, I did a screen capture or a picture that showed um, the descriptions of the variety of, of fields of study back in 1987 that individuals felt like they could uh, or were currently pursuing as their, uh, as their profession. And so you can see how sales and marketing carried a majority of the uh, uh, of the uh, career pursuits, which was really shocking to me, because ultimately all I really wanted to do, oops, all I really wanted to do was be a golf professional. So that's me on my graduation day from a high university, and you can see I have on my mortar board PGA. So I was still feeling like I was going to be a golf professional. I was, I knew that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life, and. Uh, and I really was fortunate that I found the career that I did because it helped me be, uh, the communication studies really helped me be a better uh, professional in connecting to individuals. And additionally, I think it really helped make me a better human uh, and friend uh, to everybody in my life that I was connected to. So as I, as I went through that, uh, trajectory. I, I really felt like, you know, I, I was setting myself up for success regardless of what, uh, uh, of what profession I was ultimately going to end up being in. So in about two and a half years, I realized, wow, this is, I'm working in my dream job and I'm really not able to make a sustainable living, <laughs> unfortunately. So I was serving an apprenticeship to be quite honest that it was really gonna be another decade or so before I felt like I could, I could really have gainful employment so that I could, could have a career that was enabling me to, to be successful, to do things like own a home and whatnot. So I had a member at the country club that uh, I worked at in Lancaster, Ohio, that, um, that offered me a job in sales. And uh, through the whole time of, of myself viewing sales as a potentially kind of dirty profession, I never thought that I would have had the skills that would enable me to be successful. But he saw in me all of the skills that would translate to me being successful in a career in sales. So. Um, that's how I ended up getting into the profession. Here's my contact information. So if you refer back to the uh, recording, you'll be able to capture this information. I'll also share the deck uh, with Dr. Miller. 
in case any of, you, any of you would like to have access to this. So you can find me on LinkedIn. If you'd like to connect, feel free. And that's my personal email address. So feel free to use that as well. I'm originally from Lancaster, Ohio, and I presently reside in Massachusetts. Uh, I've lived here since 2006, and I've over the last 25 years relocated um, pretty much everywhere uh, east of the Inner Mountain West. So I've lived from Colorado to Florida uh, to Massachusetts, and I've had a variety of different professions. So I started as a golf professional. I've worked as a sales representative and a sales manager. I've also worked in marketing communications. And also, I've been a director of new business development, which included product management. So uh, again, I've, I've worked in a, in a varied uh, number of fields, although some of these things are interconnected. And the skills that I think have really helped me be successful and what I've learned through school, and I went through my old transcript. So uh, unfortunately, I was embarrassed by some of the grades I saw, but you know, that, that happens when you're in college. You don't always, uh, don't always excel in all your coursework, but when I got to comm studies, really my GPA got better, uh, my outlook and, and my engagement with coursework was uh, far more gratifying. And ultimately, this, this list of skills are the types of things that have really helped me be successful in my career. The most important thing, which probably runs counterintuitive for most individuals, that I think is, uh, is utmost of importance in, in sales is good listening skills. So when you're in sales, if you're really successful, what you need to be able to do is determine the person that you're trying to get to buy your product and service to, to share with you what they're looking to either try and fix, accomplish, or avoid. If you can't find a need, from that person's perspective, then you really can't be successful in selling. You may have the best product in the world, but if the person sitting across the table from you doesn't see the value in that product, then you're gonna to struggle to get buy-in from them. And so the only way you can really determine what it is they're looking for is to ask a ton of questions, be a very receptive listener, and ask very detailed and pointed follow-up questions. So without a doubt, Listening is the most important skill I learned through my coursework, and it was always reinforced with all of my professors that you needed to be a good receptor, not only a good speaker um, in, in, uh, in, in your uh, profession. Uh, public speaking, so I can remember the first public speaking uh, uh, piece that I did. It was, I really liked playing racquetball. And so I did a presentation on this, the basics of playing racquetball. And I felt like I could never do a five minute presentation. The five minutes ended up being, I think 14 minutes. So I was blown away in not realizing that when you're really engaged in the subject matter, something that you may be dreading on the front end could come pretty naturally. Um, and so, uh, again, because that tends to be one of the things that people fear the most in life, um, having public speaking or INCO 103 for me really helped me understand how I could be better um, in, uh, in speaking in front of a group. Uh, storytelling, which I started this presentation off and hopefully you felt some connection in learning a little more about my personal uh, story is, is really important. And it's good, you, you have to get really good at having a, a beginning, a middle and an end, you know, so you can organize your thoughts and really deliver somebody at the end to some level of connection um, with the story you're telling or the product that you're presenting and how it can add value to someone. So getting very good at telling a story and connecting with people is extremely important in sales and I've and I have calm studies to thank for making me a better storyteller um, and, and ultimately the one thing you don't want to do is you just don't want to vomit a bunch of information on people <laughs> you want to make sure that you're gauging their connection um, and you're ultimately trying to persuade them uh, into uh, into seeing how something can have uh, or add value uh, 
to their personal situation, regardless of the product or service you're presenting. So if, if you, again, can't help carry them to the solution that your product or service provides, then you'll have an unwilling participant in the process. And ultimately, you don't always want to make a sale, particularly if you're not convinced that the other person is really going to see the value in it in the end. So sometimes the best sale you can make is a sale that you don't make um, because you could create long-term bad will with potentially a long-term customer. If you're not persuading them, they don't see the value in what you're selling. Uh, communicating in, in different groups. So whether it's one-on-one -on -one communication, small group or large group, uh, the, the having had the experience in my coursework to be able to be an effective communicator in a variety of different environments, certainly very, very important. So selling is a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, but I've also done small group presentations. I've done presentations in front of several hundred people. And so to have the confidence to be able to do that and, and do it under pressure is again something that I had the opportunity to do in pursuing my coursework and, and through my career. It's, it's uh, again helped me. Um, analyzing your audience and adapting your pitch to the, to the group is extremely important. So you're not going to have the same message to uh, the different uh, audiences that you can present to and so the, the really the, the next point ties directly into that that I have. So the type of dialogue you use, the jargon or the language you use, and the speed at which you speak is going to be extremely important to allow you to be more effective in delivering the right message to the right group. So, you know, specifically, you have a variety of different buyers when you're in sales, and sales can take a variety of different forms. So technical sales, for example, medical device sales or pharmaceuticals, there you're, you're, you're in, a, in an entirely different connection um, with the potential buyer than you would be if you're directly selling a product or service to someone like an automobile or like insurance where they have a direct benefit. Sometimes you're selling to someone who's going to use your product. So you have a user buyer. Sometimes you're selling to someone who is really trying to find out what economic or financial benefit there's going to be. So it's called a financial buyer. And sometimes you're selling to a coach, someone who doesn't ultimately make the final decision for a product to be onboarded, but you really need to have that individual coaching, if you will, other people within the organization that may um, use your product or service. So varying your message to those individuals is extremely important um, when you consider the types of things you're talking about. For example, a financial buyer, economic buyer is not going to want to hear about the technical attributes of a product typically. They're going to want to hear about the financial bottom line and how it's going to how it's going to improve their organization's financial viability long term. So analyzing that, speaking correctly, and trying not to use 10 cent words when you can get away with a two cent word is um, really important. So sometimes it's great to use big words, depending on who you're speaking to. Sometimes it's not. Higher education, for example, has a couple of really great 10 cent words that always make me chuckle. So there's words like cohort and pedagogy or pedagogy, um, however it's pronounced. So whenever I hear those words, they make me chuckle a little bit because oftentimes when they're used in front of uh, an audience that really doesn't need those big fancy words, you can off put an audience. And so making sure you're using words that are appropriate uh, to your audience is important. So as I understand it, Dr. Miller says you've gotten through a number of these different items in your coursework to this point. And so some additional items that um, you have coming up in your coursework is conflict management and resolution. So for example, when you're in sales, sometimes your job only starts when you've sold the product, but on the back end, you're trying to support the good or service and on occasion, things may go wrong. So you have to be really good at massaging conflict 
and finding an amicable resolution between your employer and, uh, and the organization that's using your product. So that's another skill that I was able to learn uh, through comm studies. Survey writing and execution. When I was in my, I think, three or 400 level coursework, we did a survey for OUPD. And so we had to get really good of writing surveys so that we made sure that the data that we got back wasn't anchored or biased. So we needed to make sure that we were getting really independent feedback and honest and direct feedback. And we weren't trying to lead the audience that was taking the survey in a certain direction. Um, so that's been very, very valuable in my career uh, in trying to uh, gauge the interest of a, of a company, for example, and us trying to add new products. Uh, to our product offering. So you need to be really honest with yourself when you're generating surveys and, and, um, and executing those uh, with, the, uh, with the survey participants. And so that was something that uh, was really invaluable in my coursework. Conference leadership. So I had mentioned earlier in my uh, presentation, I was always kind of an organizer and I always enjoyed getting groups of people together despite the fact that I was introverted. And so um, organizing conferences and meetings either for my team or for an audience of our uh, consumers who are using our products uh, was an important part in my, or has been an important part in my career. Uh, and that was all something that was covered uh, through my coursework and communication studies. So I learned a lot of really good, solid skills um, that helped me be successful in doing that in my career. Just leadership in general. So fortunately, uh, presently I have a seven member team that reports to me. And so I've learned to be a better uh, servant leader, an empathic leader. And again, try and ask of my team nothing that I wouldn't ask of myself. Uh, again, that's the type of skill that I learned in my coursework in communication studies that has served me well um, throughout, my, uh, throughout my career. Um, and ultimately, leadership doesn't necessarily mean you have to be or will be the leader in an organization. So sometimes, you know, your willingness to ask uh, questions, hard questions, when other people aren't willing to ask them, would help you be a, an indirect leader of a group. You know, be, having the courage to step forward and ask difficult questions. Um, and, and I always view questions with my team. It's a Dave Abram-ism, which is there's no such thing as stupid questions. There's only stupid people who don't ask questions. So <laughs> I really think that that's, that's something that all of you should try and employ. And that, that, is, uh, that carries through in all facets of life, not just if you choose a career in sales. And then ultimately, uh, lastly, I, I'm closing with interviewing because despite the fact that many of you may not view yourselves as ever wanting to consider uh, a career in sales, you will be in sales in your life. You have been to this point in your life, whether or not you know it, and you're going to have to get really good at it when you're interviewing for your first job and every job after that. So you, you have to get good at being able to sell yourself. And the skills I learned in interviewing, not only interviewing individuals, which I use more now as I'm hiring associates to work for our business, um, but when I'm personally interviewing for positions, the skills I learned in interviewing in Ohio um, have been invaluable. And so being able to be authentic, doing a lot of research on the front end if you're interviewing for a job. Those types of things, it ties into leadership and being good at asking questions. Showing your engagement and interest is extremely important. So it's not just what's in it for you, it's, it's what's in it for the employer. And uh, my interviewing skills were far sharper and I thought set me aside from, from leaving college uh, and having had the comm studies experience, I, it made me a better interviewer and I think it made me a better candidate for employment. So um, what I've learned from uh, spending a lot of time in volunteerism, and again, Emily was very, very kind in her uh, introduction of me uh, earlier in my, in my uh, servant 
um, participation at Ohio University, my volunteerism, and spending time with students like you on this, uh, on this talk. Um, the, I, the one question I get the most from Com Studies students is, I have so much value for the skills that I've learned, but I'm not sure what I can do with these skills. And I hope the one thing that you've learned in this kind of short presentation, which I've tried to make nice and tight to be able to answer as many questions as you have, is you can do a lot. There's not a lot you can't do once you've gone through communication studies. It, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to pursue a degree in sales. Um, if my personal story tells you anything, it should tell you that you, you will have a, a set of skills that will be uh, able to be applied across a myriad of disciplines. And uh, as long as you have the right energy and interest and engagement, um, then you will be able to be successful. But sales, I think, is, is really a uh, profession that gets a bad rap. And if people do it in the right way, it actually is a really important, vital thing that helps businesses improve their value proposition. So, um, so, that, uh, so that is essentially you know, the hard skills. Really quickly, some soft skills, I'd say, that I've learned is, is I've, I was a much better constructive uh, critic or analytical thinker. And having gone through the coursework, um, I credit a lot of my professors for that in really encouraging me to um, deep, uh, dive deeper into uh, a lot of different uh, coursework that I went through. And so uh, that's been something that's been really helpful to me. I'm not claiming you don't have to know all the answers. And when you get out of college, just to let you know, you will not know all the skills. You may be one of, the, one of the very few individuals that knows exactly what you need to know, but when you're going out into your career, you will be taught a lot of what you need to know for your job. So don't fear that not having the answer is, uh, is going to put you behind because you'll always be able to be taught. You'll be onboarded and, you, and you'll learn the skills. You'll be taught the skills specific to a task that you'll need to acquire. Um, knowing how to get the right answers um, from the right individuals is important. And so at this point in your career, networking with people like me um, or other people that, that may be influential in your personal life or, uh, or college career, you know, don't be afraid to network and ask a lot of questions and connect with those individuals. Willingness to commit or overcommit to take on additional tasks and roles, that's often you know, something that not a lot of people really want to be the first one to jump in and volunteer to help on a committee or uh, to volunteer for something. So I, I'd say that I would encourage you to do that as much as possible. That'll set you apart. Um, uh, I had mentioned earlier, not asking someone to do something I wouldn't be willing to do first myself. That, that has served me very well in my career, and I think that's what makes me a good leader, um, particularly in sales. And um, if you get to the point and comm studies really turns you on as a major or field of study, I'd encourage you to pursue a personality traits or styles methodology. So Myers-Briggs is something that uh, people are very familiar with that um, uh, methodology. The one that I employ is called the Enneagram, um, which helped me understand myself a lot better and helped me understand my in introversion and helped me be more outstanding in certain situations. And so I've dropped in information for a book that I've found uh, influential for me. So hopefully I've done a good job of remaining somewhat on time through that uh, presentation. And so now is your opportunity to ask whatever questions you may have. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and um, we'll, uh, we'll open up the floor. Dave, while people are getting prepared, we do have a couple of questions um, in the chat that I, I'd like to go ahead and start asking. Um, First from Ariana, was there a career setback you faced which you later realized was an advantage? Um, 
Yes. So the my my largest um, difficulties or career setbacks have really been personality conflicts um, within an organization. So it hasn't been a particular role I've taken on. It's really been trying to work with different personalities, and that's again I kind of ended with the enneagram of personality traits. But what's been really helpful to me and has made me better at managing those kind of personal conflicts has been employing a methodology that helps me understand other person's perspective because you need to understand your worldview is right for you, but it's not necessarily right for others. And so that's where I think those types of methodologies can really help you understand other people's perspective better.